What's up? What's up? Guess who's back again here on a Wednesday? It's a hump day, Alex. Good morning to you and everybody at the Old Fashioned Show. Good morning to you, Alex. How you doing? Oh, doing fantastic, man. A big, big hump day, a big Wednesday here. We're only, what, a few days out from the spring game. Cody Carpentier texting me this morning saying that he could be coming in Thursday. So Thursday, oh. he comes stay out here. We're Is he staying with you? Is that confirmed? I think so. I, I think so. I, I, I told him he could. <laughs> so I, I think he's got to take me up on it. He's coming out to do, um, and we have, we have to do radio on, because, you know, NFL draft stuff is kicking back up again. So we had to yeah. do radio on Sirius yesterday and have to do it again on Friday. So I'll actually, that is something that I told you about that kind of was a scheduling snafu here with this one. So yeah. um, I got to do that with, with Cody on Friday morning. So he's going to come in on Thursday to get that done. But yeah, man, this is just a lot going on. We, we're going to play buy or sell today. A bunch of interesting stuff that Coach Sark said yesterday. I don't feel like on war too much to really take away from yesterday's uh, practice from anything new happening with alignments or things like that. But maybe a couple of new things. Do you want to just maybe hit on a couple things that you uh, heard yesterday at practice? I know it'll kind of um, – or post practice with, with Sark, and I, I know it'll kind of parlay into what it is what we mainly wanted to talk about as it pertains to Jade Barron. Well, there was a couple of things that that kind of stood out. You know, you first of all, you know me, Alex. You know I play the hits, and the hits are the court. <laughs> so I, you know, I that kind of guy. If I go on tour, baby, you won't hear nothing from my new album. You're going to hear everything, all the classes. I'm like a parrot head, right? You you go to Jimmy Buffett concert, you know exactly what he hears. So I, I play the hits, which is the quarterbacks. And, you know, wanted to it, and, and see where they was. The kind of the, the genesis of the question was because um, he brought up Arch um, unsolicited to me. And so he brought up Arch and he said that Arch had his best practice of the spring, which was on this past Tuesday. So I, I wanted to kind of get, you know, go dive back into that, double back into what that looked like from his perspective and really kind of getting into Alice like, hey, is did he feel like this is his strongest quarterback room since he's since he's been here because Alex I mean, I've been here since 2014 the rooms have been pretty lean okay we, 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 we talk, <laughs> yeah, that's we talk I'll about sloops we talk about pretty uh, pretty lean <laughs> yes I talk about we I, from David Ash to sloops from swoops to Gerard were you ever here for a case McCoy kind of deal were you ever here for a case nah, McCoy deal? Nah, nah, okay nah. First, first year was David Ash was uh, recovered from a brain injury all throughout the offseason, and then he makes it to game one, and then he gets hurt, uh, and then never plays again. So that that, that was that was. It feels it. like a lifetime ago, man. Yeah, it does. It does. There's a lot of losses ago too. So you, so I go go through that whole litany of just like eh, until you finally get to Sam Ellinger, and you finally have some, kind of a plus player. So just hearing him talking about Arch, one of the interesting things that he said about Arch um, was that it, it's, it's a, he, that he talked about Arch. He's usually good at trying to make plays with his feet, but it, it, but you but you see with a lot of times with young people, they these young quarterbacks, right? They just like they just one two read and then they they were scrambling like he and he can run like people underestimate how good of a runner Arch really is. Oh yeah, he, he can move, man. We've seen he it really can. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah he. He's really good, but one of the things he said, he goes, he goes, we like that, but we want that to be the almost the last resort because I want him to have a real sense of uh, in the field of stepping up in the pocket, making these throws, and when he has to use the legs, use them. And then, of course, he went on to uh, you know talk about you know obviously he he thought that um, that uh, <laughs> some. Quinn Ewers, my God. About? Oh, gosh, Ray Quinn? Ford. Okay. Brain <laughs> fart. Brain fart, boy. Like, well, I was just like, I, I was just, you trying to think of a backup tight end or something uh, like that? No, no. I got me. the backup tight ends. <laughs> okay. I, got, I got covered. I got all those guys. I got the, my Spencer Randalls covered and everything. No. He, thought, he said Quinn had a great uh, Saturday in the scrimmage, um, and then that carried over until Tuesday. Uh, he liked what Trey, Trey has been doing. And then he mentioned Cole Lord. Like he talked about Cole Lord going five for five uh, in the scrimmage. And so he seemed to be really happy. So that was kind of the first thing I thought, uh, Alex, that that stood out. You can respond to that if you'd like to. 
I'd, I'd be interested to hear what you what you think about what Vivek B is saying in the chat. So, it, and thanks to everybody in the specs chat. Thanks to everybody for being here. Oh gosh, already up to like 150 of you guys, man. Um, so you guys are in here super. Oh, we early. was at so, almost 800 people watching yesterday, Alex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, this early, man. We're only five minutes into the show. Give 150 yeah. here, dude. That's a big start. Um, yeah. So thanks to everybody watching. Thanks to everybody for being here on the specs chat line. Make sure if you're watching, please like the show, subscribe to the channel. We would certainly appreciate that. Also, if you have questions you'd like to get right to us, you can always send them via super chat. Uh, we would certainly appreciate that. But uh, thank you guys so much for being here. Vivek B saying, and I think we can both answer this one. Sounds like for all the firepower the offense has, it still isn't clicking like it should. I'm not sure exactly where he got that from, where, where he would take mm. that away from. Maybe it's not from anything that you just said, but maybe it's just something no. that he, he hears just over as a theme. Um, I th I don't you, you know there have there have been reports from these scrimmages that and we've touched on it a whole lot that the offense maybe at times has had trouble generating as much of a rhythm as you might like, right? Sustaining yeah. drives, doing stuff like that. But you have to remember. You know, spring football is zero sum stuff, right? These are yeah. zero sum games. These are zero sum scrimmages. If the defense dominates, it's like the Texas fan is on ultimate tilt because they can't be happy about the defense dominating because it means that, oh, well, what did the offense do wrong? Right. Um, so you always have to think about spring football through through that prism for for sure and say, like, well, if the offense is struggling, at least you have something on the other side to say, well, you know, then the defense is doing something right. But I don't get the vibe from anybody that I mean, I feel like Quinn Ewers is having his best spring. We're hearing about Arch Manning popping off with some of these really good practices every single time. You might hear instances of saying, like, hey, Jonte Cook needs to be more consistent, or hey, like. Isaiah Bond isn't quite where we want him to be as far as consistency and stuff like that. But those are individual uh, practice to practice, player to player type of micro little you know, snippets of what's going on. I don't think that we should be projecting that stuff. I mean, wh what we're here trying to do is get information from sources to try and give you the best information and the best sort of recap that we can from a school that will not give us any access to practice to tell you what's going on there or to say little things that might be happening or whatever. And so um, whenever those bits of info um, come to you in, in, in aggregate and you get, um, you get, uh, you know, you get, you get, you, you get dusted and you get peppered with these um, various little reports and things like that. I, I don't think it gives the full story about how, you know, it's like just because one guy stood out this day and one guy struggled this day or whatever, it's, it doesn't mean there's struggles every day, right? Or there's this kind of stuff that's happening every day or this is a theme, right? It's just we're just trying to give little little details from practice. And that's all anybody re reporting on this beat is trying to do just because the access that we're given is so miserable. And that leads to trouble with fans. And that's what I've always tried to tell the, the sports information department, you know, more access to the media makes a better fan base and a, and a happier fan base and one that's less worried and less anxious. I mean, Vivi puts in here uh, something from Catch's Thoughts of the 10 Thoughts of the Weekend. The offense is doing well in the red zone, uh, but not sustaining a lot of successful drives for the second consecutive scrimmage. Said is a note where file and worry. So I think that's where he says uh, that comes from. But I also do believe what Alex just said, right? It is a zero sum game. So, sure, you, you know, you, we, we're going to be obviously looking to see what that looks like from a red zone perspective. But you also got to remember, too. Vivek, and with all these things, I mean, <laughs> when they call out a play, the defense does know what the play is going to be, right? So, I mean, like, they're, they're, they do have an idea where the ball sometimes, is going. Yeah, yeah. I mean, on defense, on practice, you kind of sometimes have an idea. And you certainly know the offensive line's line calls, right? If you're a defense – I mean, take it from – if you're a defensive lineman, like you, you, you know what your own team's offensive line play calls. So you, you know when they say B, you know they walk up and they say B and they point at something or whatever, or they say a word that starts with B. Like just in my like that, that means the snap is on two, right? A, you say a word with the let, you know, you you say albatross, albatross. You're like, all right, well the well 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 the, you know they're gonna snap on on one, right? Because that's a word that starts with A. Like so, there 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 are little things that you pick up on through practices that you certainly know. I don't think you always know exactly what the play call is, though. 
Sure. But there, there, there are certain things that you, that you know with the line call. You got a little bit more of a cheat sheet than you would do. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right? Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, of course, the other thing that was interesting, Alex, was there was a conversation about John A. Barron uh, that Steve Sarkeesian – uh, you know, had and basically they said they've been trying to limit John A's. Yeah, I thought this was cap. wild, man. It's wild. Uh, like it, that wasn't anything that was very clear to me. Uh, and this is what he said. He said, uh, this is what Sark said. He goes, uh, the history of his time here, he's had nagging things throughout the last couple of years. Um, he goes, I know it's in the best interest of Texas football to get John A. Barrett as healthy, fresh, and fast as he can. Uh, uh, be come the fall and throughout the season. Um, you go, we know he's more than capable as a football player. He's tough, savvy, physical, good leader. Uh, the fact that we have some good depth that we can limit and monitor how many reps we're giving him helps. Uh, but when the fall rolls around, he will be fine and flying around. Yeah, your thoughts on that, on, on hearing that, they, hey, they've been trying to hold Jade back just to get him ready for the season. Well, I... Didn't wasn't there something additional to that quote saying something like it was, um, he wasn't he he never came back healthy from the um, from the from the ankle from last year. Yeah, he battled he battled an ankle. Well, it was just more of context. You know, he did battle an, an ankle injury. Uh, well, we knew he point. had it early on, but yeah. I didn't know. They said once he was back, he was fine. Like they always, they always lie about you know. I mean, they're not gonna. And look, I don't I don't blame him for lying. What are you gonna come out here and tell them? Tell them like that's the thing that I do understand. It's like I I I applaud Sark for kind of lying to the media and not putting a X on his on his players various body parts for other teams to target. Right? That would be mm -hmm. that would be malpractice. But um, the um, yeah, I mean that would explain Jody Barron's you know second half of twenty twenty three, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of these guys had a tough second half of 2023, man. Hayden Connors, one of these. JT Sanders, one of these guys. Um, just playing through stuff. I think is it a little bit concerning for you? And so this is the update. I mean, the I mean, the update to to me, like the the upshot from this thing, is that Jade Barron still is healed from something that happened in October with his ankle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean that's what it seems. I mean it seems like it. I mean it seems like that's where we're at now. To be to be fair, he was you. He was wasn't like he had time to to really rest um, between you know them getting done in, in early January and then basically starting back up with winter conditioning. You know, re realistically, Alex, since the season has ended, we're only talking we're only about three four months since the season ended. So hasn't had a, t a lot of time to rest the ankle and still being back out there. So. Clearly not severe enough for them just to sit him down for the entire spring, but enough for them to be conscious that, okay, he does have something that requires their attention. He may not be 100% until the fall. Well, look, Jade Barron is a key piece of this defense. He's a guy who I don't – he 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 would have gone to the Shrine Bowl if, if he'd have left this year, right? Um, or did he have a senior bowl invite? I don't think he did. I, I'll look yeah, at him. Now that I'm about thinking it. about it, I'm thinking he might have actually gotten one for a minute. I, yeah. um, uh, or is it Alfred Collins? I'm thinking that might have gotten one. I know one. Alfred did. I, I don't remember. Hold on. No, no, no. You wait, wait, wait. He did accept a senior bowl invite. You are correct. This is, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that he accepted it. You are correct. Yeah. I, I, and I think what it, I, you know, I, I was always, I'm always like, man, that's a big deal getting Jody Barron back. And you know, Texas, even not even just coming into last year, the year before last, do you do you remember how Jody Barron? And this is not to this is not to bag on the guy or anything like that. This is what these players do. But he kind of held it over Texas' head to to get more nil to come back even two years ago, right? I was mm -hmm. uh, I was surprised it was that easy to get him to come back this year whenever he had all the leverage of the senior bowl, all the rest of it. But uh, clearly, dude, he's a good player. Jim Nagy told me on my show that I did last year here on the channel that some people might have watched football with friends was in the afternoon. And Jim Nagy, the director of the senior bowl, was a uh, guest on there pr prior to the season talking about the day that the senior bowl watch list got dropped. And mm -hmm. he said, um, he said at that time that the senior bowl who, is 
dude, they are, they are. Yeah. Oh, so there's a photo of him there. So he gets invited. Yeah. He's got the Panini Prism card, everything. Um, um, they said preseason that he was one of the top nickels in the whole sport. He said that he's one of these guys, and it's just, just such a key position now at the NFL level. Is most most NFL teams have gone to nickel as their base. Like to, a, a lot of college teams. I mean, nickel is Texas's base. How you know? Whenever you see Texas go to like four down linemen and three linebackers and four defensive backs you look at that and you're like wow that looks weird mm -hmm. you know that that alignment doesn't look like anything we're used to seeing like it's like what's this exotic stuff let's like well a regular four three right <laughs> yeah it's, yeah it's, you know it's just 1984 but, football <laughs> it looks like, by, by looks like you're playing tech looks like you're playing tech mobile or something but it's the <laughs> it's, it's, it's just it's just true man and um, whenever you have a guy like Jade Barron who can knife in off the line of scrimmage, who can uh, handle, you know, uh, um, tight ends, slot wide receivers, even when they're given two way goes with a lot of space ahead of him, he's, he's got the shiftiness. He's got the ability to just really fire out of his T step, come forward, be there and run support. Uh, he's, 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 you know, just as susceptible as some of these other guys of, you know, um, Getting burning coverage, right? Mm -hmm. It's like there have been times where you've, you've seen him get coverage burns. But if you look at Jody Barron, just extremely good as far as just being around the football, get ball. And I mean, there were comparisons with, you know, they what was it? Jim Nagy was saying it was, um, uh, you know, like uh, Terry and Arnold from um, Alabama, right? Preseason wasn't getting as much hype as he was now, but they really liked him for his ability to. Uh, play both at the outside corner and at the star, the like the star, the 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 nickel, whatever you want to call it, right? Mm -hmm. Um, there were there were people who said pre season this year that Terry and Arnold was a guy that was a lot like like Jade Barron that had that outside uh, versatility, but who you really liked as an NFL evaluation at the at the star spot, you know, the, the spot that was made famous by these Nick Saban defenses and stuff, you know, and certainly, um as important a role is within the structure of what Texas does. So it's important for Jody Barron. I just wonder, man, what's this going to mean for Jalen Gilbo? Are they going to be able to keep Jalen Gilbo on the roster for another year sitting behind Barron? That's a good question. By the way, keep it on the roster. We have some breaking news real quick. Um, Chris Hummer is reporting that Jamon Tapp has entered the transfer portal. Well, dude, uh, that's, I was going to say it's like that after the Billy Walton thing. So, um, Let's see. Can I do a can I do a share screen here? Uh can you have the other screen? Share the screen. Okay, yeah. go ahead. Do you, do you, do you care if I do it? All right. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. It, it, it's just the it, this hit I'll hit maximize to take us off and I'll take the okay. overlay. So let's just do that. Let's, let's let's do it with everybody here. So we'll take J Mon tap off. We'll just move Tulselia Kana here right behind. Zena Umiazolo. So now from this edge spot that we talked about before, we have now – we've said that we needed to – Texas needed to shed seven guys coming into spring football. Mm -hmm. And with this edge spot, we before we had Trey Moore, you know, it, it, or Ethan Burke, right? Ethan Burke moving from, from side to side here. Colin Simmons, Zena Umiazolo, Tosilia Kana – or Jay Montap, or Billy Walton. We said that cannot continue, right? <laughs> now we know that that has not continued, so get those guys off of the depth chart for now. We'll see who else is left to go, man. I can see a couple more of these guys. Not saying exactly who, but um, certainly, you know, a couple of couple of these guys we could probably see maybe, um, maybe moving on, but we'll see what happens with them. Uh, but yeah, so that's updated for now. So, favorite J Montap moment? Um, <laughs> the moment he reminded me. No, I, I won't be. I won't be disrespectful. Uh, I have none. <laughs> I have none. Uh, it, it, they said uh, he he had eight tackles last season. So, uh, good luck to him. Uh, All on so special like, teams. I mean, that's that's good for yeah. eight special teams tackles. That's like you're making a tackle almost every week. That's good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's that's that not that that'll help you find a home. That'll definitely he help you find a home. If you he didn't play on that. defense, did he? Did he play on defense? Let me uh, just see if he even played. Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. He so he did. He played a lot more than I thought. He played ninety three snaps, but only during the blowout. So he only played versus Tech, versus BYU. Uh, he played. He played. Oh, versus Baylor. That was a. Bl- he played most versus ba- dude. He played thirty snaps versus Baylor. That was where he oh, played wow. most of his snaps. So, um, yeah. I think my favorite yeah. Jaymon's had moment. Don't, was don't, you, don't you get the feeling? I said this yesterday, Alex. And don't you get the feeling that? Sark may have had a conversation with some of these guys earlier this week or over the weekend and, and said, like, hey, this is going to let you know. It's probably not going to work out for you here. Like, it, you might want to get a, a head start on the portal and jump in there. Now, you're probably not going to get a lot of playing time in the spring game. You, you get, go ahead and try to find a home now because this is we, – we're, we're beyond the point of coincidence, right? We're, we, we've got – Burrell had to go, right? So we understand that, right? But – You've got now, now a, 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 at least what three other guys since him that that have jumped in the portal. Well, I mean, look, if you have information directly on this, you would know better than I do because I know your your sources are the ones. You know, my sources are more the underlings. You have some more of the sources that are some of the big <laughs> some of the big fish. So I don't I don't know. You know, no, no, like this is just theory. You know, this is just theory. Okay. This is not reporting. I'm just okay. I'm just putting context clues together. I would I, I would I would just say that um. And look, I'm not talk- like I didn't mean to s- anybody out there that you know on the staff. I'm not calling you guys underlings if you're watching. I'm just I'm, I'm saying I'm worth I'm worth got some guys a, 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 a little higher. <laughs> no, up the let's, not, let's not let's not let's not put any uh, tea leaves out to where we get our sources from. But go ahead, Alex. Yeah, um, yeah. Just but just I'm not trying to do that. Just trying to put out any fires there. Um, okay, but this the stuff about. Um, I I would I would think that Sark look the the ones that came were utterly expected. Peyton Kirkland was was the only one right that was working third team out of that 2023 group right. Um, that edge spot we said Billy Walton, Jamon Tap, you know all these guys, you know something's some something's got to give here. We just said it. Something's got to give with those exact two. Because they were the kind of the more upperclassmen types, as far as like, I mean, at least when you look at the depth chart, you can say, well, Tosilia Kana is at least a redshirt freshman, right? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I guess Billy Walton was a redshirt freshman, but Jamon Tapp was a um, was a sophomore. So you figured that Akana, Billy Walton, Tap, one of those guys, something had to happen at that edge spot. Like something had to happen. Um, Peyton Kirkland, that, that had to happen. Brearell had to happen. I think that those were so obvious that those guys have been so buried that maybe they knew that they could, right? That maybe they knew that they needed to get in there. Because but they're, they're jumping I, in there before the spring game, though, Alex. Like they're not I, even waiting. Well, but they wanted to get that. I think that you know, my neighbor, my my neighbor, my buddy was texting me. He's like, over under on five and a half players enter uh, tomorrow, and that was on sun, Sunday night. And I was like, I think it'll be under that because I think that people wait till after the spring game. He's like, but don't they want to get in there early just to kind of get their names in and get things going? I said, well, that's a good point, but I don't know if there's anybody who. Um, really fits the bill of like a super coveted dude who you know wants to get in there and, and get things going who is interested in 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 leaving you know um i would figure the guys who are interested in leaving might be the guys who just i said if there's what i told him and i think it's come to fruition has come to pass is that anybody that gets in right now are going to be these guys who can look at the depth chart and they don't need sark to tell them that that they're buried they they see that they're buried right I think that these are the guys who obviously saw that they're buried and or had the off-field issue like Samaj Burel, right? And it was obvious they were going to get in the portal. I think that those talks with Sark come after the game. Because, I mean, here's the thing is that more of these guys need to transfer. Sark's going to have to get more of these guys to transfer. And he's like, well, at this point, I guess I got to go talk to some dudes. And I got to go have the, 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 the real talk with them. And um, I think that certainly – those four that are gone so far, Burrell, Peyton Kirkland, Billy Walton, and now Jamon Tapp, they would have been the first of uh, you know, four of the first guys who Sark would have gone and knocked on the door and said, Hey man, let's have a conversation about sort of our goals and where where they meet here. Alex, um 
I've got something from when we go into buy or sell that's a total just play off of this. But before we get into that, I know you want to talk Texas beef traders. So why do I why don't we take a pause for the cause and we're gonna pick up this conversation because I got something that's totally, totally gonna play off of that for buy or sell. For Texas, but I get to talk Texas beef traders. Oh God, I love talking Texas beef traders. I mean, look, just do, just look at that. Look at that tomahawk steak. You can have that right now for for ten percent off when you go to Texas beef traders right there in the heart of Lowman's Crossing, TexasBeefTraders.com, Lakeway, Texas, right off of six twenty. Easy to get to. Whether you're Steiner Ranch, Bee Cave, um, you know West Lake, West Austin, even even Terrytown, man, it's just it's, it's right up Bee Caves. You just come to Texas beef traders and listen. If you can't get to Texas beef traders and you want to take it. That discount you want to take advantage of farm ranch direct beef, black Angus beef direct from Mason, Texas, processed every week. The meat that you're eating and giving to your family will be processed that week. It will not have any cockamamie injections, no weird vaccines, certainly no mRNA vaccines, no inoculations, nothing. No, never commingled with any other herds. This is pure, delicious protein for your family it's gonna taste better than anything you can buy at the store and you know it's local you know it's american when you buy it at the grocery store it probably is not american and it's probably injected with all kinds of stuff that you would not want to put in your body that you do not want to put in your children's body you do not want to put in your family's body okay go get the best beef there is go get the beef that i get the best tasting beef texas beef traders texasbeeftraders.com go in there go in there and come 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 hang with me i'm in there all the time drinking beers and stuff and listen if you can't get in there, if it's too far away, you have no excuses. You can call Texas Beef Traders. You get 10% off, and they'll just bring it to you. Texas Beef Traders. Then go buy a house. Uh, <laughs> Eric Sells Homes, DFW. If you're looking for a man with the master plan, has got you covered. Eric Sells Homes, El Presidente himself. It's that time of year, springtime. You're thinking about downsizing. You're thinking about maybe getting uh, another one. Like, hey, it was the wintertime, cuffing season. You went ahead. Wife is pregnant. You guys are about to have the, the baby number two, baby number three, whatever it is. It's time to get a bigger house, whatever it is. Eric Sells Home, DFW, got you covered. There's that QR code. Make sure you check him out. Let them know your favorite unk sent you, Eric Sells Homes, DFW. All right, Alex, I want to – it, it was. It's actually was a just perfect – uh, because I actually Hold on, had... is this a super chat from your own sponsor? My guy, that's my guy. <laughs> that's, my that's fam right there. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't mean to cut you off. But, I mean, that's your sponsor, well, Andy. That's my guy. Super chat. He's my friend. He's we gotta, we gotta get right to that. El Presidente. So he's, he's, he's asking us what positions we're looking forward to watching during the spring game. I'm, I'm. He's concerned that the defensive tackle room. Thank you, El Presidente. Thank you for being a great sponsor of the show, brother. And Eric <laughs> Sells Homes DFW. Who yeah, all right. Show, who, by the way, in the fall, Alex, will be here for El Presidente's picks on Fridays. No, oh, okay. He put in his picks on Fridays. And what was his record last year? What, what was his record last year? Did we went on? Did you not keep track? We don't want. We, don't, we kept track. We don't want. We, we want to talk about. We talk about new things. <laughs> you were talking about old stuff, man. Old stuff. Why are you bringing up old stuff, Alex? <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, so what I'm what I'm watching. Uh, I want to watch the safeties. I want to see if Andrew Makuba gets in with the first team, right? Um, the wide receivers. I want to see if Ryan Wingo works in with the first team. Left guard. I want to see if NATO works in with the first team. I don't. I don't think he does. But I did talk about a situation yesterday on the modcast where I think maybe they just want to get some film on Hayden Connor at center for like a whole spring game, and so maybe they could. Uh, maybe they could play NATO or Cole Hudson, have them working at left guard, and then yeah. I mean, you you mentioned it. The defensive tackles. I'm super worried about the defensive line coming into next year. Um, just see how they hold up, man. I think if they go ones versus twos, it'll be easier for the defensive line to look good, right? Whenever they're going up against the second team offensive line, simply because we just continue to hear the second team offensive line simply can't get that much push. And that's one of the reasons why I'm not reporting this. I'm not saying I've heard this. I'm not saying that there's anything from practice that says this, but I'm saying I would not be surprised if Hayden Connor does play second team center during this game, just to bring a little stability 
um, a, a, a little bit of extra beef to that second team offensive line and also serve the purpose of getting them extra reps of Connor at center in case they do need to make any kind of moves during the year as far as uh, the, the interior offensive line. And this year, I'm not saying that in the case of like, in case Jake Majors is, isn't good. I would have said that last year. I thought Jake Majors made such great strides this season. I'm saying in case shuffling needs to happen internally, I feel like they're they're not going to put Connor Robertson at, at center if anything were to happen to Majors. I feel like they would move Connor into center and put somebody else somewhere else, and they'd like to maybe get some looks at him like that. So that is that's all to say that even if Connor is working as the second center in the spring game, I don't think that means he's moved to center. I think he's still the left guard, um, but I think that'll be the takeaway that a lot of people have. So I'm just kind of trying to get in front of it in case that is something that happens. So yeah, those will be the things that I'm watching. All right, so Alice, let's just do this. We got questions that are coming in. We've got some super chats that are coming in. We got some other questions here. So let's just table our buyer sells for the moment. Let's knock out some of these super chats and then maybe some other questions that people have for us. We've got two super chats that have come in. Uh, Jamari Lee has said, hey, Joel Klatt stated Texas looks like a top four team in the country based off of him being at the spring practice. Buy or sell? that Texas is a top three team as of right now. Top three. Well, I mean, was one of the uh, – Texas has gotten b better everywhere except along the interior defensive line. And you can't say they've gotten better at wide receiver, but they've gotten a lot – they've gotten more interesting. They've gotten deeper. I mean, can't can't we? I mean, the the, the secondary is sure. the secondary is better. The edge rush is, I mean, going to be so much better with the linebackers. Maybe I get. I guess you lose Jalen Ford, but you get Anthony Hill coming on as a. I, I almost feel like that's a wash where you get Anthony Hill coming into year two where he's at the height of his powers. In that Jacob Manu role, mm -hmm. gosh, man, I'm watching this guy. Um, I'll have it out today. Hopefully, if I get it done, I got so much stuff to do. But I've been watching. Uh, I've been breaking down the tape and I, I actually got some all 22 tape from Arizona to watch um Bill Norton the defensive tackle for those guys or the nose tackle for those guys and I'll to Jacob Manu playing that that Mike linebacker role I just always forget like Anthony Hill is going to be a monster with Johnny Nansen it's it's, it's going to be it's not even going to be funny so I think that the linebacker dude, Anthony Hill and that Manu role is going to be too sick. Like that's going to be an upgrade, man. The wide yeah. receiver, the the wide receivers is a wash. The just given the depth and given the fact that somebody's going to step up, right? I mean, maybe not a wash, maybe just a tiny bit worse, but certainly enough to be effective. The offensive line's better. Cam Williams is an upgrade on Christian Jones. The running back room, you lose Brooks, but you lost Brooks through the whole CFP run last year. You lose JT Sanders, but you bring in Amari Nyblack. JT Sanders turns out to not be quite the athlete that we thought he was based on his testing. What? Jumps a 9-6 broad jump, 30-inch vertical, eight bench reps. It's like, what? <laughs> so I think the team actually on the whole is better. They made it to the college football playoff last year. The quarterbacks in college football aren't the same quarterbacks, and Quinn Ewers comes in as one of the top ones. And if Joel Klatt says they look like a top four team in the country and he's on like a spring game tour, spring practice tour, that's another quiver I can stick in the arrow about what, you know, why, why this team could be. So, like, I'll, I'll buy it. I'll buy it. It's fine. I got it. I got an easy one for you, Alex. I, as you were talking, I was able to pull this up, right? So let's look at, let me see if I can re, re hide this for a second. All right. Let's look at the top 10 AP. It is the top 10 from the AP poll from last year, right? So to how to finish. So Michigan, and we know that things are going to be potentially different with them. Right, is they, they, the coach is gone? Potentially, they, they had sixteen people at the combine or seventeen okay. at the combine on one. They lost their quarterback and their head coach. Okay, and, and and they now are facing NCAA sanctions. So we can say Michigan won't be the same as they were last year. 
Washington, I, listen, they lost their coach and they lost their quarterback. So, and they and they had guys at the combine. So how many people did Washington have at the combine? Did they have like nine or something like that? No, they had they had uh, God, I think they had fourteen or something. They, 14? Was, they had double digits. Yeah, I forgot okay. exactly what it was. So we know Michigan won't be the same. We know Washington won't be the same. We know Georgia is going to be Georgia. Okay, so what, you know, dude, Washington, Washington, Washington lost the Penix. They lost their head coach, and and they and they lost their their stud uh, left tackle, their first round left tackle, and they lost their three stud wide receivers, Jalen McMillan, Jalen Polk, and Roma Dunze, and they lost Michael Penix Jr. I mean, are you kidding? Yeah, they won't uh, be the other, same. Than, other than that. How was the play, Mrs. Lincoln? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, and so, so we know Georgia is always going to be Georgia, right? So we don't we we know that we got them in there. Bama has lost uh, Saban. Uh, they've got a new coach, obviously the guy from Washington. Uh, and so, uh, by the way, uh, one of the things someone had joked earlier, Alex, about I I, I made a joke about you uh, in my uh, Sunday pulpit uh, because the the Alabama coach, Coach DeBoer. Actually, as a, there, was a, there was a story on Yahoo that said he actually has his, his, his stuff open to the media and he makes his uh, assistance available and I think he makes practices available, so on and so forth. And I said, well, I hope Alex checks in from us in Tuscaloosa when he takes his new job. So mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. there was a joke about that. So uh, Alabama is probably not going to be the same. There'll probably be a little bit of a fall off there. Um, I think Oregon, uh, what they look like without Knicks, we'll see what happens there. But I feel pretty good about their coach out there. Um, Florida State loses a ton. You know, Missouri. Oh. Yeah, yeah, you know, so if we just look at the top Who's 10. Jordan Travis, Keon, I mean, yeah, Keon Correct. Coleman, Johnny Wilson. I mean, it's like, yeah. I, I love Lane Kiffin. I love I love me some Lane Kiffin and I love me some Old Miss. And and so, and then, so yeah, I think it's e- it's really easy – from just based off of last year, to say Texas is going to be in that top three, we can see what Ole Miss looks like potentially. Ohio State's usually pretty tough. Um, you know, they, they don't seem to fall off too bad. So, yes, to answer your question in a long way of doing it, uh, I would buy on that one uh, as well. Are we, um, are, are we just going to be able to hold our buy or sell questions? And, we've and, got to hold them. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to hold them for next Yeah, we'll have to That'd hold be them. great. Forever. Uh, we got to get a whole show for tomorrow. Yeah, we do. Uh, uh, Zoe wants to know. By, uh, he's got a super chat in here. Um, Four ninety nine. Thank you so much, Zoe. Uh, the over under one point five of the starting defensive tackles are not on the rosters. Are not on the Texas roster right now. I, I think, think he's talking roster. about going to get to the season. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, but he's still on the rosters. Um, I think he just means they're not on the Texas roster currently. I think he's saying that one 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 and a half of the starting defensive tackles that Texas has for next year are not currently on the roster. And he just said rosters on accident. Okay. I swear that I'll take it. Um, So, well, we know Bear Alexander's out now, right? Mm -hmm. That was looking like he could be in for a while, and it was looking like he could be – Kind of playing it off, and the, dude, that 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 was looking like it was happening. <laughs> you know, it was like mm-hmm. a weird, weird thing. Um, the media feels like the media might have jumped the gun about getting the um, getting the information out there. So Bear would have been one who, if he if he would have come, I would have said he'll definitely start. It's looking like Texas might get this Bill Norton. He's coming in this weekend from Arizona. The other Arizona guy, number forty five. Funny, funny. The same phone, the same jersey number as Vernon Broughton, and I would just, I would recommend that you guys. And I have more work to do on him, but before you go all in on Bill Norton being the savior of the Texas defense, I would go and just watch the Arizona versus Oklahoma game in the whatever that was, that whatever bowl holiday. What was that Alamo Bowl? Oklahoma. Uh, Alamo Bowl. Yeah, you're correct. Yeah, actually, you're correct on that. It was Alamo Bowl. I'll do that. Go to that game and tell me what you think that guy brings to the football field to where he would start at Texas. So he wouldn't start. Maybe he'd start over Broughton. Maybe. I'm not sure. But I mean, at least maybe he looks like he maybe eats up a little bit more space than Broughton. But mm-hmm. 
you see the way he gets blown. I mean, there's a time, man, he's had a hard time against double teams, but so does so so does Broughton. It's not like Broughton was that good last year. Yeah. Um I think Norton is maybe like a chance to maybe be like half a starter. If so, if that's the case, do they get another? I just like you gotta feel like, man, you gotta feel like Sark and the staff. They have something up their sleeve, or maybe they know like a mission. Like this can't be the only plan. It can't be the only plan to go get number forty-five from Arizona. And I'm gonna have a call them up about this on Orange Plus today. I, I gotta get out all my thoughts on this because it feels like people are really pinning their hopes on this guy. Um, it's like it's gonna be another Trill Carter article. I think people are just, you know another Julio Billingsley article, another mm-hmm. you know it's like say I'm, I'm sorry guys if Texas takes this dude, I'm not sure he's gonna have the impact that you think he is. Now, maybe I'll watch the Washington game and I'll just see, right? I'll watch the Washington game. I'll, I'll watch the two games versus opponents that Texas played last year, right? Just like I did for Tia Olili Savea. And when I told you that, look, Savea is going to be better than Trill Carter. He's going to be a good contributor. So far from what I can tell from Bill Norton, he's – I'm not sure he's on the level of Savea. So we'll see. I still got to watch the Washington game. I'm going to watch those two games. I'm going to chart everything about him. I'm going to chart his. I've charted his alignments. I've charted his productivity per snap. I'm through the one game. Look, th- that was a game where Arizona they turned Oklahoma over six times. They the Oklahoma the, the Oklahoma offensive line was called for seven penalty seven holding penalties against the Arizona defensive line. The Arizona defensive line was getting oh, getting after these guys. Norton wasn't responsible for any of those holding calls. He didn't have anything to do with any of those turnovers. He didn't have any of – so we'll just see, man. Like, But I'm interested to watch the Washington game. But um, I think Texas is going to need to get somebody in. If we're talking about guys taking over as starters, they're going to need to get one of these guys from Michigan. Uh, Christian Kruger saying Ver- Norton's better than Broughton. Well, I mean, that's, I'm sorry to tell you guys that's not saying much. Um, there, I did put something up from El Presidente because he did drop something in the super chat. So, I mean, that's enough for him to get a second question in, in my opinion. Uh, he just wants to know, hey, has Texas changed some of their defensive schemes with the new code DC, Alex? Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, Texas played a lot of man defense. And look, I'm not the one who knows all this stuff about the the, the coverage. Um, I'm more of a kind of linebacker on defense. I'm more of a linebacker and, you know, defensive line edge rush guy because that's what I knew and what I, the people who I knew coached and stuff, but you know, I mean, what Nan, with, with Nansen, cert, I mean, the linebackers are run completely differently. Um, the, the, the fronts, the, the alignments are different. You're going to see a lot more of these three man odd fronts than you saw um, previously. I think he's going to be integrating in a lot of that stuff. There's a lot of just the one high, one high safety with, with man un- underneath. Um, yeah, it's, it's going to be a lot of neat stuff that we're not used to seeing. And what somebody told me at the beginning of practices, it was actually um, somebody from the coaching side who was at that first scrimmage. He said that with Nansen, you can just tell he's not just a linebackers coach. He he, he brings like a defensive coordinator's men- mentality, right? Because he's talking a lot about how the linebacker play extends to the coverage and about how the communication needs to be better and about how these guys need to be working all in synchronicity. And he could see that, that was happening, whereas – under Cho, everybody loved Cho, right? And the and the linebackers did, the team did, the defense did. They didn't want to lose him. That guy goes on to be a head coach, right? You don't you don't want to lose that kind of coach, right? But this coach that was a coach that not affiliated with Texas, but one that went to Texas and stuff, he said, you know, we didn't want to lose Cho, man. But if you know, now that we got an answer, we kind of saw like we kind of needed a dude like this, right? A dude that was working with the linebackers who was going to be, be able to bring a new a new set of eyes, a fresh set of eyes to what's going on here with the communication between the linebackers and the DBs. Alice, there's a, there's a, here's a, here's a, here's a game. Do you want to play this one or not? With uh, Mr. Torres, Eric Torres, by the way, um, goes outside of the wide receiver room who would likely be a transfer out of the wide receiver room. Uh, do you got anybody that you think would be a transfer candidate uh, there? Is anyone that you're worried about that could be on the fence right now? There's a lot of young guys that are in that room, though. Alex. Yeah, not at all. 
Because, look, Jonte Cook and DeAndre Moore are sophomores. Isaiah Bond and Matthew Golden, they just got here. They're juniors. And then you got Aaron Butler, Ryan Wingo, Ryan Livingstone, and Freddie Dubose Jr. that are all true freshmen. None of those guys are transferring out right now. The only one that would fit that profile, I would you'd say, who's kind of a backup right now, it seems a little bit buried, would be Ryan Niblett. But he's the second yeah. he's, he's the second slot receiver, and it's only his second year here. And he's a redshirt freshman. And um, but you know, get he is a redshirt freshman and he is behind DeAndre. So I'd say if, if of any of them, Niblet would be the most likely. But I don't think it's I don't think that that's something that's going to happen. Do you? But do Alex, you Alex that? actually revealed something that I actually thought was pretty damn genius the other week when he starts looking at the profiles and he starts doing his FBI transfer portal profiles. The one thing Alex always likes to check is their major. And he yeah. said, <laughs> and if they if they're in the Macomb school, he's like, that that kid ain't leaving here. But yeah. if he's got something like communications or something to that effect, like that, that kid's probably good. That kid might go. No, some of the communicants, like those, like what's his name? Oh, I forgot who it is. Oh, it's um it's Zach Swanson who does corporate communications. I'm like, well, he ain't leaving. You know what I mean? Um, but it was <laughs> No, the 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 one that they all do, the one they all do. What is this? Like, I'll just pull up the roster. I'll tell I'll tell you, it's like a sports science or something. It's uh wow. it's I'll, 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 it's like every one of these guys, um they 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 have this one. Let me pull it up. So this so the the roster, it's called uh physical culture and sports, is what it is. So you got Quinn Ewers doing that stuff. You got Matthew Golden. You got Jalen Gilbo. You got Austin Jordan. You have Ryan Wingo. You have Chris, uh, you have uh, Jade Barron. You have Isaiah Bond. You have Terrence Brooks, Amari Nyblack. They, oh, Gavin Holmes. They're all like, and and I'm 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 only down to jersey number nine, and I just read you yeah. off all those names that are taking this uh, taking this uh, this physical culture and sports. <laughs> um let's see there 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 goes um you know just this 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 actually would have been one of my buy or sell questions uh but but text guy two's got a good question we'll just go we'll just go play the hits everyone's got some questions in here how about this we've got less than 10 minutes in here right so if you got a question just go ahead and get that in right now. We'll try to we'll try to knock them out speed round as much as possible. Super chat to get you uh, to the front of the line. So you want to you got a question in the next 10 minutes and you just don't want to risk it. Go ahead and drop a super chat in there. You'll get to the front of the line. Yeah, and, and thanks to and, and thanks to like the 600 people that are in here right now in the specs chat line. Thanks to all you guys. Thanks so much to specs too for sure for bringing us the specs chat line. Yeah. But if it, but if, if you guys could please just remember to like the show, subscribe to the channel. That really, really, really would be super, super helpful to us. Just like the show, subscribe to the channel. Liking the show is free. It doesn't cost you any money, right? But it helps people find us. And we all know the catch is going to dock our pay if we don't get up to like like five 500 likes. So Yeah. And then, and we also know that it's time for, you know, it's weekend time, Alex. There's, there's lots of things. NBA playoffs are, you know, right there. They had some playing games last night. For those people who want, want to, uh, something to do, maybe some barbecue this weekend, after you go to Texas Beef Traders, it's always a good reason to go to Specs. You're needing Specs same day delivery can save the day with our Specs app or online shopping. From world-class wines to hard-to-find spirits and craft beers to gourmet foods, delicious snacks, and spectacular sweets. It's back. Cheers to savings. Also good reason if you went out and bought a home from Eric Sells Homes DFW, it's celebration time. Uh, that's for damn sure, Alex. Okay, so there, there's he, – he did – I wanted to put this up here real quick. Um he goes, and, and I think this has always been a subject that I've always raised. How often do we see that going to the portal really makes a difference for players who aren't on the field at transferring schools? Seems like most of, of a bust, if not already, if they're not playing a lot. In other words, some of these rotational guys who may be going to the portal. Are we talking about from the Texas end? How often do we see that going to the portal? Or is he talking about just in college football? That makes he's talking in general. He didn't really ask for that, but it, let, basically, I, I simplify it. Rotational oh. guys who go into the portal 
how often do they do they even make a difference when it gets oh, to another program? That's, that's that's Joe Burrow. Ask all these. I mean, come on, dude. It's like a lot of these guys just need they they need to go to a, they need to go to a spot where fresh start, different system. Yeah, I mean, it's like I'm just trying to th- like it was what. 65% of the play, I think it was, I forget the exact stat. This is going to be wrong, but just believe me when I say it was something like two thirds of the players of the senior bowl this year were guys who had transferred during their college career. Yeah. It's just, it's kind of just part of the deal these days, man. Yeah. So um, I think most of the dude, it's like, I would, I'd venture to guess that maybe in five years from now, anybody that you see that's like a fifth year senior in college, you know, most of those guys are probably going to be dudes who have transferred once. The guys who don't transfer, the guys that just come to they come to school and they're three and done, or you know, the Roma Dunze who should be three and done but decides to come back for a fourth year, like the super studs. I mean, there are guys that have their. It's look, man. It's becoming easier and easier and easier that as you have your kind of little bumps and bruises of life through college and things might not go your way, you face a little, little a little bit of adversity. Whereas in the past you would face that adversity by, you know, nose to the grindstone. What is it? Nose to the axe to the grindstone. What is it? Nose to the something. I don't know. What I don't know. It's something. Good. It's the saying I've never mastered. So I'll yeah, um, that used to be the way, right? I think one of the ways of facing adversity in your college football career right now is to say, like, look, I'm going to go through the total pain and the you know what of having to get in the transfer portal and t- trying to make my trying to make myself, you know. So, I I I don't think that they, it's like they have a high bust right now. Taking the, now on the Texas side, taking these retreads from school, you know, taking these dudes who are uh, retreads at other schools and stuff like that. No, 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 that's that's not going to work. I've said it from the very beginning that doesn't work. I've told you that all those takes from the portal from previous years were were bad. The kind of guys you want in the portal, are the kind of guys that Texas has gotten in the portal this last year the ones that are coveted by other schools, they get in there because they're saying like, dude, I want a big school already. And I want to, I want to go to, to, to another school to make more NIL money. And because my coach just left and all the factors come together, right. For one perfect storm. You don't, you don't want it being like, man, no, oh, just, I got in this E or that's got this cloud over my head. They can't really get anything done here at a school like Texas. You can't take that guy, but you can take that guy. If you're in Nebraska and that E or with the cloud over his head is Trey Palmer. And he has, and he, is um he hasn't been able to get on the field because of guys like Keyshawn Butte being there and guys like Brian Thomas coming up and Malik Neighbors coming up and all the rest of it, right? But he's uh he's the he's the fastest high school track athlete in Louisiana State history. And you can get him as a deep threat. And next thing you know, he goes to the senior bowl, has a great week, and now he's a significant player for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. It's like those are the kinds of dudes, right? Those are the kinds of dudes and the kinds of situations. Being here at Texas, it's a different kind of situation because you're not going to be able to want to take the dudes who are the kind of the retready guys from other big schools like Texas, right? You know what it makes me. You know who I think of when I think of something like that. Because um, I know um, Texas guy had said like I think he said like not um, everyone's like a Joe Burrow, but you know I think of like like think of a guy like remember Byron Vaughn's who was here. Remember his mom was mother hustler. And yeah. Oh yeah. Remember- Remember, but you remember, like, didn't really play a lot here at Texas, right? But then he goes to a Utah State and ends up being really productive for them. Uh, then he goes out to to Baylor, ends up being productive, I think, for them. And he's he's got a shot to maybe make it, you know, an NFL roster. Uh, but so he's a guy that you would say to yourself, okay, well, at Texas, nothing really happens or it wasn't really hitting here. But he goes and, and ends up being productive at other programs. So there are some things I think to be said for a a person that maybe is not a standout where they are, but they get a fresh start somewhere else. And then, you know, you never know what can happen from there. So he's a guy I think of. Oh, dude, I'm about to sneeze, man. You, you might want to get us, uh, you might want to, I'm sorry, dude. I might. There is a, there is a thing called a mute button. Yeah. Hold on. (laughs) We have this thing. It's in front of us. It's called a mute. Uh, but you're right, Texas guy. Not everyone's Texas guy. I'll, I'll just say the last thing on that one. You're right. Not everyone um, does have that that kind of impact. Uh, but there there is that. Uh, look, man, 
Alice, why don't we save some of this stuff, you know, for tomorrow? We've got uh, some, you know, some buy or sell questions that we didn't get a chance to get to, but uh, we 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 went with the flow of the show, and I and think it ended up being pretty good. So, uh, you have any? I, I'll, I'll say this. Thank you for watching. Hey, just so you know, at noon today, the two things I want you to remember before you go, before you go, I will be back at noon today co-hosting with Chad on House Divided. So that 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 to you know not, not not don't use that as an excuse not to watch. So so but please please be back. So I'll be back at noon for two hours on there. I won't go anywhere. And for nearly 600 of you guys who in ladies who are in the chat, do not forget this upcoming Friday will be the Orange Bloods Spring Game Mixer. The entire staff, as I hide this thing, will be there. Uh, out at the pitch from 6 to 9 p.m. Come out there, have some drinks with us. they got happy hour that's out there. They've got food that's out there. Uh, so you want to come and hang out with other Longhorn fans out there. Money B says he's going to be out there. I don't know if El Presidente is coming into town. But nonetheless, come out and ch chill out with us this upcoming Friday at the pitch do not uh absolutely do not miss that uh the last thing i always say is live each day like it was your last because one day it will be so enjoy the rest of your wednesday thanks so much everybody man thank you for being here um we couldn't do the show without you but if you could please remember to like the show subscribe to the channel we certainly appreciate all that you can find all of our content over at orangebloods.com we will be back tomorrow here on the old fashioned show doing some doing some buy or sell some 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 leftover buyers some stuff i really want to talk to on more about today but we'll get to tomorrow um and yeah man go out today go do something big go do something awesome we will see y'all very very very